Hello, good evening from Spotlight. Military support for the ambulance service. The cold weather, busy hospitals and the impact of strike action have led to the request for help. Also tonight, do you feel safe on the streets at night? We're on patrol with the police in Barnstable to hear how they're tackling antisocial behaviour. The wait is over, an early Christmas present for hundreds of families as HMS Montrose returns home. For him coming home and having Christmas with us, I don't need anything else. That's all I need, just to see him back home. And panto season is here. I've been meeting the cast of Sleeping Beauty, which opens in Plymouth tonight. Hello and thanks for joining us. Our top story. The military is being brought in to support the ambulance service in the southwest as the pressure on health services intensifies. Winter problems, industrial action and huge demand are all resulting in record delays. The region's ambulance service is also reminding people to think carefully before dialing 999. Our correspondent Jen Smith has the latest. Next week, pick it lively as it would like. Jen Smith, BBC Spotlight. Next tonight, the government says that 14 schools here are set to be transformed as part of its school rebuilding programme. It's the latest of its 10-year scheme, which will see schools get new, net-zero, energy-efficient buildings. So which ones are getting the investment? Well, this is the list we can see here. Four in Cornwall, including Callington Community College in Devon. Seven schools are going to benefit, and we've got Swimbridge Primary in North Devon there. Um, Dorset, two are going to see upgrades, and one more in Somerset. So what does it all mean? Well, old facilities will be replaced. We'll see new classrooms, sports halls and dining rooms. Now, it's good news for the schools involved, but critics say the costs are enormous, and it doesn't make up for years of underfunding. Well, John Ayres has been to one of the schools benefiting. It's Tipton St John Primary near Sidmouth. John Ayres, BBC Spotlight, Tipton St John. Hundreds of families received an early Christmas present earlier when HMS Montrose returned home to Plymouth. Friends and relatives of the ship's company braved the cold at Devonport Naval Base for an emotional reunion with loved ones. John Henderson was there. <laughs> And BBC Spotlight, Devonport. Fantastic, absolutely lovely to see that. We're welling up here. Now, do you worry about antisocial behaviour where you live? Places across the region bid for cash from the government's Safer Streets Fund early this year. Barnstable was awarded nearly £350,000 to pay for street marshals and improved CCTV. Ben Wolvin went out in Barnstable last night to find out more about how that money is being spent there. Ben Wolven there. Meanwhile, in Somerset, an anti-drink driving project called Operation Tonic is underway. There have been 169 arrests for driving under the influence. That's in less than a month. Last year, the Avon and Somerset Force found a third of road accidents in the area involved drink or drugs. Coming up later in the programme, a glimpse of the panto ahead of opening night. And this weekend, we have a huge change in weather, a big change in temperatures. I'll bring you the latest in a few minutes' time. Using art as therapy for patients isn't new. But now, a Devon University is including art as part of its training in medicine. The University of Exeter's Academy of Nursing has introduced a new module called the Art and History of Nursing. Well, we sent Johnny Rutherford to find out why this new tool is being included in the Nurses' Medicine Cabinet. BBC Spotlight, Exeter. Students at Devonport High School for Boys have been taking part in role play sessions to help teach them how to be compassionate friends to children experiencing bereavement. One in 29 children experience the loss of a parent or sibling every year, according to the charity Child Bereavement UK. Claire Woodling has the story. And don't say we don't. A bit better about what they're going through. 
OK, sport now and starting with rugby. There's a first at Sandy Park this weekend where the extra Chiefs take on opposition from South Africa in the Champions Cup. The Chiefs got their campaign off to a great start with a bonus point win in France last weekend and they'll be looking to back it up against the Bulls ahead of the return leg in Pretoria next month. It's the first time any South African sides have been included in the competition. Most people in the press are going to talk about the Bulls this week because they're here and it's new and it's fresh and it's different and, and so we've got to make sure that we don't focus on them, we focus on ourselves. Yes, we've got, to, we've got to look at them tactically and technically around there, but actually it's going to be zoning in ourselves that's really going to be important. Meanwhile, on Sunday, the Chiefs women's team take on Harlequins and the Cornish Pirates are also at home in the championship and that's against Doncaster Knights. OK, looking at the weekend's football and Plymouth Argyle welcome back former manager Derek Adams and his Morecambe side to Home Park tomorrow afternoon. The Pilgrims were knocked off the top spot in League One last weekend following a dip in form. A win tomorrow would be their first in five games. Meanwhile, the winds have dried up a bit for Exeter City too. The Grecians, who sit four points off the playoffs, face a tough test at fifth place Bolton and that's on Saturday. Both Torquay and Yeovil are at home in the third round of the FA Trophy, but there are away ties for Plymouth Parkway, who travel to Barnet, and Taunton Town, who play Slough. Right, one of the things that really gets me in the Christmas spirit is a visit to the Panto. And Sleeping Beauty opens in Plymouth tonight. So let's open another door on the Spotlight Advent Calendar. And our reporter, John Danks, has been speaking to the cast at the Theatre Royal, including EastEnders star Shane Ritchie. Fantastic, love a panto. OK, it was minus five on the car thermometer on my way into work this morning, but it feels like it's warming up a bit. How's it looking, David? Do I need to put the hat and gloves away? Not just yet. All oh, right. But possibly by Sunday. Thank you, Kirk. Hello, good evening. Yes, we've had some prickers. Have a nice weekend. Kirk. Really, it's all change, isn't it? Thank you very much for that, David. That's it from all of us at Spotlight. Thank you very much for watching. Stay warm and have a lovely weekend. Bye-bye.